good morning class so today we'll be starting with a new unit that is animal physiology i think this is the last unit of your ncert so the two things that we'll be dealing with today is the digestion and absorption we'll try to complete some basics of the digestion and uh, before leading to the complete process that is involved in the digestion of various components so what are the things that need to be digested the things that to need to be digested are those things that we consume that our body intakes and that is uh, why the require uh, it is required to digest those things that are being taken in or ingested by our body so now these are the basic nutrients that are being taken by us and these are essential for our body to perform its day to day course and also with the if any of these is missing from a diet then uh, that diet is not called as complete and it is an incomplete diet and that can lead to malnutrition so now the carbohydrates proteins fats vitamins minerals and water all this include together and form a complete food moving on how uh, are these following components being digested ingested first of all ingestion because first we have to take inside food for carrying on further or next processes so that's why ingestion so how does ingestion takes place by our mouth in some lower organisms they are present like in amoeba there is the presence of pseudo pseudopodia uh, and they are the invagination for capturing the food and they capture the food and that food dissolves in their body so they do not have mouth for ingestion but in case of human beings and other uh, higher animals we have mouth for ingestion so first of all discussing the definition what is digestion the process of conversion of the complex food substances to simple absorb which are being easily to absorb that is absorbable forms it's called as digestion so the conversion of or the converting of the complex food what is the complex food the carbohydrate it is complex food and it has to be broken down into glucose so glucose is the unit uh, of uh, the single unit of carbohydrate that our body digests and it utilizes glucose for its day to day activities not complete carbohydrate complete carbohydrate it is a very complex structure and our body cannot use it directly that's why the breaking down of complex materials is required for be used up by our body for its activities uh, also in case of proteins proteins are not directly being consumed uh, they are broken down into its uh, single unit and the single unit of protein or the building blocks of protein are amino acids same in the case of lipids so now what uh, are the two types of digestion the digestion is of two types that is the intracellular and the extracellular digestion what happens in the intracellular digestion intracellular digestion is that digestion when the process occurs within the cell and inside a food vacuole so as i gave you the example of amoeba in amoeba there are uh, pseudopodia present they are foot like structures and these foot like structures grow and they form a uh, vacuole a cavity and that cavity is being used up by the amoeba for taking in food and uh, whatever the digestion process is there that occurs inside that food vacuole so but this is not the case of uh, in case of uh, human beings or other higher animals so intracellular digestion is present in some lower uh, animals like protozoans porifera coelenterates and some free living platyhelminthes then comes the extracellular what happens in the extracellular digestion when the process of digestion occurs outside the cell Uh, that is not inside a food vacuole or something but it occurs outside the cell and the example for this are coelenterates phylum platyhelminthes to phylum chordata or the higher so uh, in the previous uh, class on only we have finished the different animal phylum so it is related to that that after the coelenterates the uh, various features start to upgrade and this upgradation Uh, digestive system is also getting upgraded and that's why intracellular mode is changed to extracellular mode now this is the complete human digestive system so it starts from the elementary canal but before 
jumping to elementary canal let's discuss some more features of digestion digestion in the vertebrates occurs in the di digestive tract or elementary canal so digestive tract and elementary canal are the same words the various parts that is involved in digestion can be broadly grouped into so what can be the grouping can be done for dividing the various parts of digestive tract the first one is digestive tract or the elementary canal then comes the glands so glands are also playing very important role as the associated glands are responsible for secreting some very uh, useful enzymes and these enzymes are used for breaking down of the complex food material so the after the elementary canal comes the digestive glands uh, and then again there is division on the basis of embryonic origin so the elementary canal of the vertebrates can be divided into three parts foregut or it is ectodermal in our origin and it includes what does it include the buccal cavity that is this is the buccal cavity or the oral cavity the uppermost or the first part of the elementary canal so it includes the foregut includes four means present it is present at the most apical position the four means it is present at first position buccal cavity or oral cavity it includes pharynx then it includes esophagus stomach and the small part of du duodenum so only a sm uh, not complete small intestine but only a small part of the duodenum is uh, present in the foregut of the elementary canal then comes the midgut and what includes uh, and uh, again midgut is not ectodermal unlike the foregut it is endodermal in origin then endodermal in origin means that is it is developed from the endoderm among the three germ layers the three germ layers were ecto meso and endo so among these three midgut is developed from endoderm and the foregut is developed from the ectoderm then midgut it includes small intestine and large intestine so what comes in the uh, midgut part the two, only two the small and large but these are also of uh, various parts in, uh, they contain various structures inside them and they are the major uh, parts that are being involved in the process of digestion so elementary canal is a very large uh, tube that is connecting all these structures together and forming the complete digestive system third one is the hind duct it is ectodermal in origin and it includes the anal canal and the anus so the last part that are coming under the hind gut so all these three were the different parts of an elementary canal in the diagram itself you can see what how much different types of glands as well as the different structures are present in one elementary canal it starts from here and end till here even after rectum uh, it is a structure present called anus which is used in the excretion it is not visible in the picture because of the slide being too big but it is there so the last part is anus and the first part is oral cavity so this is the uh, starting and ending of an elementary canal so now this the digestive system of man uh, it includes further divisions as the gl uh, glands are further being shown divided in this in the, this picture there were no division of the glands only the uh, names were given but here it is clearly being present that how the glands are still divided into three different types of parts and uh, all this are uh, then colon which is a part of the small intestine only it is also shown dividing as it is transverse ascending descending colon uh, basis on the position that is uh, this is the small intestine complete now this is descending descending means it is going from up to down so from uh, higher level to the lower level so it is getting descent then it is the ascending because it is getting from lower level to higher level transverse means it is present at the side position so on the all this basis of the uh, position where it is present the colon can be divided so uh, all this structure small intestine large intestine part of it will be discussed later first of all the first and foremost from where the elementary canal starts is the oral cavity or the buccal cavity what does it include the teeth tongue and the palate which is the roof so in the diagram you can see the various parts of the mouth or the oral cavity the lips the gingiva or the gums these are the gums the hard palate then the ovula 
the uh, hanging structure that you can see if you sometimes you open your mouth very wide open and then you can see that uh, there is a hanging structure present up just above the tongue and that is called as ovula this is the soft palate hard palate is present just be, uh, just after the teeth the beginning of the teeth and soft palate is present near the ovula then these are the molars the teeth are again divided into four types the molars premolars canines and incisors that also we'll discuss in detail now comes the teeth so what are uh, what is the definition of teeth the teeth refers to the number kinds and and the arrangement uh, the teeth are again being divided into different criteria based on the position or the arrangement in what in what way they are arranged so the uh, three types the main three types are thecodont heterodont and the diphyodont so morphologically the teeth can be distinguished as homo and hetero so the main or the mostly used terms for uh, distinguishing teeth are heterodont or the homodont what are homodont when all the teeth are structurally and functionally similar for the example for this are vertebrates and eutherian mammals so the vertebrates have the uh, teeth which are structurally and functionally similar so homo means same and that's why homo don't don't word is used for the teeth so homo don't means those teeth that are having same structure as well as function then comes the heterodont what are heterodont from the name itself it is very clear hetero means different so these are teeth which are of different uh, shape sizes and also are different structure in structure as well as functions so the uh, main four criteria for this are they are distinguished into four types the incisor canines premolars and molars for the so what are the examples of this the eutherian mammals so uh, in homodont all the vertebrates came under the homodont but as we all know human beings are also vertebrates but the exception for the homodont were all vertebrates except the eutherian mammals and in heterodont all the eutherian mammals are there so homodont all the vertebrates except the mammals the eutherian mammals which are we the human beings and then heterodont the uh, all the eutherian mammals the human beings so this was the homo and heterodont now thecodont what are the thecodont the teeth that are placed in jaw sockets so if the you can see the sockets present it, it is also describing in the picture the sockets in if the teeth are placed in the jaw sockets and, and they are of different kinds it is called as thecodont in the diagram you can see the various types but the main we have to learn is only the major the canines the molars and the wisdom tooth the third molar is called the wisdom tooth and about wisdom tooth i'll explain you when we'll talk about molars so this is the th uh, thecodont type of arrangement comes the heterodont the heterodont are the teeth that are of dissimilar kind now incisors the diagram of incisor this is incisor the canines you can see the canines are sharper as compared to the incisors then comes the premolar and molar so as you can see the canines are sharper then it is very clear the canines are very much well or highly developed in case of the carnivorous animal so if the animal is not carnivore then the canine will be uh, will get suppressed and it will present only as a vestigial organ so that's why canines are highly developed in the uh, carnivores as for tearing and uh, and eating of the flesh the diphyod on uh, we uh, the human beings have this type of arrangement diphyodont means they are having different types of teeth but also one other difference is there the teeth comes in two different phases of life so the two teeth types of teeth are the milk teeth and the permanent teeth so the milk teeth uh, that uh, when we are young uh, for example from uh, the teeth start to fall at the range of uh, around 5 6 or 7 so this is the age when the milk teeth started to uh, break down and the new teeth the permanent teeth they start to grow up so this is the child which is having uh, age of between 2 to 5 years old and these are the milk teeth so uh, deciduous milk teeth they, these teeth gets break down and these uh, below position in the jaw sockets you can see the buds of permanent teeth when they break off from here the 
permanent teeth starts to arise so this is the meaning of diphyodont that is die means two types so that's why in a life cycle the teeth are occurring two times in the same human being now what is a dental formula the kind and the number of teeth that are explained in the form of for formula are called as the dental formula so what is the dental formula for adult adult have 32 teeth that is the permanent teeth so incisors are 2 by 2 now what is 2 by 2 means that 2 are present in the upper jaw socket 2 are present here and 2 are present here so this is what means 2 by 2 canine 1 of one above and one lower premolars two above two lower and molars three above and three lower now talking about the child or uh, the child contains only 20 teeth and these are the milk teeth so incisors are two by two same canines one by one but premolars are absent in the case of child so that's why the number decreased from 32 to 20 now the wisdom tooth what is a wisdom tooth the third molar which appears after the age of 20 years is thus called the wisdom tooth there is a third molar present that uh, uh, that gets appears in the early 20 or even sometimes uh, at the age of 30 so the uh, the there is a wide range of when the human being a particular individual get will get that wisdom tooth so it is starting age is 20 years and it can extend on for about 30 years also so this is the wisdom tooth the third molar is called as the wisdom tooth and it is called as the wisdom tooth because it appears when a human being when an individual is mature enough so 20 years is uh, age then when the individual is completely adult so these are the wisdom teeth third molars these are the lower socket teeth these are the upper ones and here is present the third molar now what is the position of various teeth incisors these are the incisors present just in the forward position that is the teeth that can be seen in the front most position are the incisors then besides the incisors that are these are the canines then comes the molars and the, these bicuspid means these are having two cusp like structures and these are having four cups like structures so uh, sometimes the molars can be of four cusps and uh, bicuspid means sometimes they can be of two cusps so this is the position incisors frontmost canines besides incisors these are molars and this is the third molar which is the wisdom teeth now the structure of a tooth uh, as we all know that enamel is the most hard part of the body so enamel is present in the teeth and uh, below enamel which is uh, made up, ca up of completely calcium and phosphorus comes the dentine after enamel is a layer which is called dentine then comes the pulp containing blood vessels and nerves so after no blood vessels are present in enamel not even in dentine but after that comes the layer which is having blood vessels and nerves then comes the gingiva in the fr uh, first structure in the first diagram you i saw I made you see the gingiva which is the gum so the gum was present uh, just holding the teeth and below gums also there are some structures which are present which are helping in holding of the teeth so the bones then this is the cementum cementum means it is a cementing layer which is holding the teeth tight on so that the there is a uh, if even a person falls down and get or have some accident so the teeth don't gets off very easily because of the cementing layer this is the root canal the canal which joins the root, uh, teeth to the gum at the lowermost position and it is the opening of the root so the main three parts are the crown uh, the crown name is given because it is uh, having a structure like a crown then comes the neck the second most structure and the last one is the root so what is odontoblast the odontoblast it is found in the dental pulp and it secrete dentine so dental pulp here is present the dental pulp and it is responsible for secreting this dentine layer so this is what a normal tooth lick looks like now comes the tongue what is a tongue so the tongue is a freely movable muscular organ and it is attached to the floor of the oral cavity by frenulum so the upper surface of the tongue has small projections and these are uh, this is the lower 
most part of the tongue uh, tongue when you uh, uh, stick your tongue to the palate of your mouth so this is the lower part of the tongue which is uh, containing the frenulum and this frenulum is helping the tongue to uh, be held by the oral cavity so frenulum is the connecting link between the oral cavity and the tongue the upper surface of the tongue contains the papilla and uh, some of which some of these papilla also bears the taste buds the taste uh, taste papilla are of following types so the papilla are also of following types so some are having taste and some are not responsible for taste so some are called as circumvallate Cir they are ha circumvallate because they are having a circular and they are largest they are among 8 to 12 number and they are present in the posterior part of the tongue that is at the most end of the tongue uh, so this is called as the circumvallate and they possess the taste buds and also these are the largest of the all all the papilla these one are the largest then comes the fungi form these are of shape of a mushroom so these are present at the anterior position and uh, they are uh, they are very much higher in number unlike the circumvallate they are present at the anterior margins and tip of the tongue so they have about 200 taste buds then comes the foliate papilla this is the foliate papilla they are leaf like flat less than they are less than 8 to 10 in number and they are present at the posterior margin so they are present as the posterior margin of the tongue they are absent in human and found in rabbits so foliate papilla not present in the case of human beings but they are present in the rabbits then filiform these are uh, filiform are, are present in here position this is the position for filiform and they are of conical structure and they are responsible for sweet taste so uh, for sweet taste particularly the filiform papilla are responsible now comes the second structure which is the pharynx this is the common passage for the digestive and the respiratory system and the opening of the esophagus so the opening of the esophagus is pharynx and uh, then it is also a common passage for digestive system and respiratory tract because it also transfers the uh, gases that is oxygen and the carbon dioxide transfer as well as also for the food that we take in so opening of the larynx is called as glottis now what is glottis glottis is guarded by a flap of tissues in the diagram you can see this is glottis and it is a guided guided means it is being protected by a flap of tissue the epiglottis and epiglottis is responsible for uh, the incoming of the whatever the food material is coming in the epiglottis checks it so when the food material passes through the pharynx the epiglottis closes the glottis so epiglottis is for checking whatever things are coming inside and it closes the glottis for some time until the food material is getting transferred to the stomach then comes the esophagus esophagus it is a narrow muscular tube and it is 30 centimeter long and it leads to the stomach now after esophagus there comes the main structure of uh, the, our digestion that is called as the stomach and the it is passing the diaphragm diaphragm as we all know it is present here in, at this position so it is crossing it and reaching to the stomach so it separates the thorax from the abdomen thorax is the position here a lower somewhat lower than this and abdomen is here so this is separating the thorax from the abdomen and one movement is present in the esophagus that is called as the peristalsis this is the food particle that is being going down and this food particle is going down by a uh, process that is called as the peristalsis movement and this movement is allowing the food to transfer through the esophagus so there are present some inspector inspector means there are guarding structures that are helping the esophagus to transfer food so posterior region of the esophagus there is a ring of muscle called esophageal sphincter so this is the position of the esophageal sphincter at the posterior most position and it controls the opening of the esophagus into the stomach so uh, it controls means if it will be open then only the esophagus will be able to transfer into the stomach otherwise the esophagus will not be able to discharge its contents into the stomach peristalsis 
द मूवमेंट ऑफ फूड मटीरियल इन साइड द ईसोफेगस इज अफेक्टेड बाय अ वेव लाइक कॉन्ट्रैक्शन एंड रिलैक्सेशन सो कॉन्ट्रैक्शन एंड रिलैक्सेशन ऑफ दीज मसल्स वन वन टाइम इट कॉन्ट्रैक्ट गेट थिन एंड देन इट रिलैक्सेज सो दिस हेल्प द फूड टू गो डाउन टूवर्ड्स द towards the j-shaped structure that is the stomach so this movement the contraction and relaxation of the longitudinal and the circular muscles of the esophagus helps in the movement of food towards the stomach it is called as the peristalsis movement then comes the stomach what is stomach stomach is a larger muscular j-shaped structure and it is lying just below the diaphragm in the abdominal cavity so what are the three parts of stomach the cardiac fundic and the pyloric The stomach of cattle's have four parts. So, uh, in case of human beings, we have only three parts. But the stomach of cattle's have four parts. As what are the four parts? Rumen, reticulum, omasum, and the abomasum. So these are the four parts of a cattle. So, uh, so some even scientists believe that the first three chambers are the parts of esophagus. and the fourth is the real stomach that secretes hcl and enzymes so what does some scientists believe that jo first three part hote hain lumen reticulum and omasum in the case of the chewing animals that is the cattle they believe that these are the part of the esophagus only aur jo last part hota hai abomasum that is the true stomach and it is having hcl so as we all know stomach contains hcl for the digestion of various substances and that's why the uh, some scientists also consider that abomasum is the only true stomach in the cattle and it contains hcl so the embryological studies have proved that all the chambers are parts of real stomach but later on this theory was disproved as all the parts which were the rumen reticulum omasum and the abomasum they were all the part of the stomach only so the reticulum is the smallest part and its cells are provided with water pockets for the storage of metabolic water so these uh, were the part of stomach in case of cattle and these are the part of stomach in case of human beings so then talking about the pyloric sphincter the opening of the stomach into the duodenum now again so once the presence of esophageal sphincter help the move uh, the movement of the food into the stomach now from the stomach the food have to move to the small intestine and which part of the small intestine the duodenum so for the movement of the food into the duodenum the opening of the stomach is guarded by pyloric sphincter what why it is called pyloric sphincter as we all know that is is the uppermost fundus esophagus leads to fundus then it comes to food comes to pylo uh, the cardiac part and then the lowermost the pyloric part now here is the presence of pyloric sphincter so that the move, food can move further on towards the duodenum that is a part of first part of the small intestine for that is pyloric sphincter are responsible so it also controls the flow of the food to the intestine now small intestine uh, what is small intestine it is the most important and the most used part for digestion of various substances as it gets the ma uh, majority of secretions from various glands that's why small intestine plays a very important role in the process of digestion so it is uh, why it is called small intestine uh, though it is uh, longer in length as compared to the long intestine large intestine but it is called small intestine because it is present in very compact form and it's having a diameter less as compared to the large intestine L uh, large intestine is having diameter more but length is less but in small intestine the length is more but the diameter is less as compared to the large intestine so it is 7 meters long and 2.5 cm is the diameter it is divided again into duodenum jejunum and the ileum so the first part duodenum uh, duodenum where the food from the stomach is coming to and uh, by the pyloric sphincter so it is the first part of the small intestine it is u shaped and the stomach was j shaped the area it is have providing the food the ma maximum area of digestion and it receives a common opening of the bile and pancreatic duct we'll talk about glands the uh, gall bladder as well as the pancreas so these are all the glands which are secreting some very important enzymes and juices for the digestion of food so then you will come to know that what these bile and pancreatic duct will are secreting 
for helping the food to be digested in the duodenum so in the diagram you can see the liver it is also a gland that is responsible for secretion of a very important enzyme for digestion gallbladder the uh, liver is mainly responsible for the digestion of fatty acids then comes the gallbladder it is secreting bile bile is getting to the uh, intestine and in, in intestine the uh, food is being digested using the juices from pancreas as well as the bile then second the jejunum it is uh, not playing a very ma major role in the part of uh, process of digestion it is just uh, having a coiled structure and it is comparatively longer to the duodenum then comes the ileum the last part of the small intestine it is highly coiled and it opens into the large intestine and it is also providing area of absorption for majority of contents that are being present inside our body for being digested so this was all now the large intestine we'll do in the next class